Aww, yeah, Rivers here with some cool tech. And today we're going to take a look at the Flycast MK8093 Android Mini PC. So what this is, is it's a media player that you plug into your TV to make it a super smart TV running the latest version of Android. First let me show you what comes in the box, and then we'll take a look at the software. First off, you've got an 8-inch HDMI cable if you want to hide the Flycast behind your TV. Next, you've got a 2 amp power supply with a USB interface, and you've got two USB to micro USB cables, and finally a basic manual. The MK8093 has nice hardware too, including a Rock Chip Quad Core 3188 CPU, Molly 400 MP4 graphics, 8 gigs of flash storage, 2 gigs of DDR3 DRAM, Wi Fi 802.11 B, G, and N built-in Bluetooth and Android 4.11 with an upgrade available to 4.22. Here you've got your full-size HDMI port which you can plug directly into the back of a TV or into a cable with an adapter. On the back you've got two USB ports, one full-size and one micro. And finally on this side you have another micro USB port used for power or for updating the firmware. You have a micro SD card slot good to 32 gigs and you have a flash mode button used to update the firmware. Here's what you'll see the first time you start up the MK8093. You can control everything here with a wireless mouse or aftermarket remote control. So on the taskbar you have the option to hide the taskbar here. You've got your power button, you've got volume up and volume down, you've got your programs running in the background, home and back. Here are the included apps, just the basics here, you've got web browsers, calendars, clock, email, picture viewer, file explorer, music player, and the play store so you can install more apps whenever you need. Now let's take a look under settings. So first off you've got Wi-Fi which works really well on here. You've got Bluetooth also working well on 4.11. Here under the resolution you can see it's outputting at 1080p. Right now it's running an upscaled 720 kernel just like almost all other Android mini PCs. It looks very good and the icons and apps look clear and crisp. Here's your option to put your screen capture right on the taskbar so you can just hit that button and take a picture whenever you want. Here's how your flash memory is partitioned out. So you've got one gigabyte for app storage and the other 5.64 gigs are for data, pictures, music, videos, that type of thing. And you can see here it comes with Android 4.11 which works really well but Android 4.2.2 is available as well. Okay, here I went ahead and installed a bunch of my favorite apps that will be useful for a media player. Some things like live wallpapers and widgets slow it down just a bit, but I wanted to test it while it was under a load. I would not recommend leaving this live wallpaper on all the time though because it seems to make these devices get kind of warm. First, let's take a look at the CPU information. So we can see here it's a quad core running all the way up to 1.6 GHz. It's a neon device. You can see all your caches and instruction sets here. Next up, let's check root access. And both the 4.1 and 4.2 ROMs are not pre-rooted, which is actually okay because they're more secure that way, but it is nice to have root sometimes for certain apps to run. Next up I ran Linpack, and this guy was scoring anywhere between 90 and 120. Before I ran the live wallpaper, it was actually getting in the 120, so it is slowing it down just a bit, but it's still performing really well. Next up I'll run Wi-Fi Analyzer, which just tests the signal strength, and I'm pretty close to my router, about 10 feet away. Uh, the average score is probably around 55 for this test, and we're getting about 58, so just right around average for the Wi-Fi strength. Keep in mind that all this can change, so if you update the firmware, this could be different. And finally, I benchmarked it with Antutu, and I got a score of 13306, which is just a tad below average, probably slowed down because of all the live wallpaper and widgets and stuff I'm running. This could change with a new ROM update as well. The MK9083 works great with a variety of different remotes. Here I'm using a keyboard with a touchpad built in. It uses RF, so you don't need to aim it at a receiver to navigate. It's nice if you need to do a lot of typing. It's also nice if you don't have a table to set a regular mouse on. Here I'm using Arcos Video Player to look through the videos on my SD card. It also has the ability to play through an external player like MX Player to get really good video quality playback. Here I upgraded to the Android 4.2.2 ROM. I also installed Nova Launcher with a Keylime Pi theme. Nova Launcher is really fast and the icons on here look awesome. Also included on the 4.2.2 ROM is DLNA which lets you send videos from your phone to your mini PC. So here I'm sending a video from my YouTube channel, sharing it out with iMedia Share, and it's appearing on the screen and it's going across my wireless network. I can also pause and skip around in the video from my phone. 4.2.2 seems to perform better now but a few apps don't work. 
I'll put an updated information and a list of app issues with the 4.2.2 ROM in the video description down below. Here you can see Linpack is running about 10% faster than it was on 4.1.1. Overall, the Flycast MK8093 is a good player with nice hardware. I'll put a link to it, the remote, and the software in the video description down below. If you liked my video and you want to see more like it, make sure and subscribe to my channel. I release at least one new video a week now. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a like. That helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching, and as always, aloha.